lot of moms and a lot of dads and a lot of people love to put these children on the internet. Like if Johnny had three apples, pause. We don't do that. Hey guys, welcome back to the Tuesday podcast. I'm Chris Cavallari. Last night I had this crazy dream. And I've been trying to be a little bit more intentional with writing down my dreams to figure out what they mean. There's always the messages there. But this one I just couldn't figure out. And I woke up and I felt a little, a pinch, like a pinch of like not ungrateful. But I feel like When I woke up, it was an uneasy feeling like, why not this? Like, when is this thing coming? And I think as women, no matter what race, (laughs) no matter what age, I feel like once puberty hits, right? Let's start from puberty. We won't go lower than that. But let's just say teenage years to (laughs) whenever. Um, I think that we could have it all. And there's always going to be that one thing that we're, like, longing for. And what is it? Love, right? And I had to be, I had to multiple times, not just this morning, but multiple times, look back at my life and how every thing that I've asked for from God, I've gotten, and sometimes most of the time, better than what I was expecting. Um, And this morning when I woke up, it was a very short, and this is the thing, a lot of our feelings are not going away. We just learn how to manage them. And I realized like within three minutes, maybe, that feeling had subsided. Like I, I got up lying. I stayed in the bed. Um, it was still early. It was six o'clock and the dream just got really good. And I, I was trying to like stay like, you know, you always try to like keep going. And if you go back to sleep, I think I woke up like, I think I woke up at like three to use the bathroom or Goliath woke up and I took him to the bathroom and then he ended up coming back in my room. This whole, you know, the whole thing. That co-parents and sleeping thing, that's the first time last night he slept in his room um, for a couple months. Not a big deal because it's just him and I. But anyways, um, I went back to sleep after using the bathroom. And when I got deep in the dream, my alarm went off. And I'm like, no! Like, I still wanted to know what the fuck happened. Like, I needed, and I didn't, when I woke up, I was so discombobulated that I didn't have time to write it down, but it was so many things that happened in his dream. And it was like pieces, like it's not even like a full, like one story. It was like little, little stories, child. And when I woke up, I was just thinking like whatever that last piece was, it had something to do about love and or relationships. And I'm going to be honest I looked at my phone on Instagram and what I, when I feel like uneasy like that, I like to go to that part in the Instagram app where it says like create and then it says um like the time, the time stamp. So it goes back from like five years, eight years, however many years ago on this day. And I seen a picture of myself at work at Mac six years ago and I was so small. That's the only thing I wish I wish a nigga stressed you out and make you lose weight. I, that's the only thing, you know, you happy, you fat. Uh, you know, some people overeat when they when they're not in a good place. Some of us get skinny. That's the one thing you be like, please, God, give me that stressed out weight without the stress. How about that? I'll take an order of the stressed out weight. 150, one, 166 or four. That's my favorite size. 166, 164. I'm a good 175. I, just take that, take that off me. Um, but anyway, I'm looking at this picture and I'm like, oh shit. Here I am lamenting on this one thing. And one thing I will say before I keep going is 
I had to check somebody before, not in a check like, like not like that, but in check somebody before, like, how dare we say we want love? We, this is the one thing, like, we're not surrounded by love. The more and more I realized that love was not just this one thing. Love is my my son in the morning. Love is, you know, you guys commenting and my icon shopping a brand and just pouring into me freely. So I started being really aware of the love that I'm wanting, I already have. I give it to myself and others give it to me. It may be strangers, but I am loved on and I am poured into so freely that once I shift my attention from who wasn't giving me the love, I could see a plethora of people wanting to just give here, take it. Can I have some more, please? Yes, I seen it. I felt it. And it was so strange because before, when we're in that dark space, you only see this one thing and you want, you're fixated on this one thing and you want this one thing and this one person to just love you back how you love it. And then it's like, girl, wake up. The alarm clock going off because guess what? You have that love. Sometimes people can't give you that love because they just don't have it. They don't even love themselves like you want them to love you. And I looked at this picture of me at work six years ago. And I want to say, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was like the finale of my work days at a corporate, well, at a corporation and not for my own brand, not for Shop Icon, not for Icon HQ, not for anything that I was going after. It was, you know, <laughs> I'm looking at this picture of this girl. She looks great. But it was one of the darkest times in my life. I never worked over a four hour shift because I was part time. And I, I remember feeling like, damn, I couldn't wait to leave to go get my son. I literally could not wait to leave because I would be receiving messages and I was always distracted. And some of y'all still be distracted at work by that person that's not pouring into you. I, I seen a flashback. I literally seen a flashback. And within those three minutes, I, you remember how Raven Simone, it was like, doo -doo 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 -doo. that's how I felt. And I'm thinking about how I had to leave work as soon as I got off, go pick up the baby, get home, carry a car seat up four flights of steps. And I remember making that $5,000 in that one day for my business, not for another business, but for my business. And I'm, I'm remembering no bullshit. I'm remembering this all in three minutes. And as I'm about to go on a poor me journey, I'm, I'm thinking about this. I'm like, everything, everything that I've wanted, that God seen for me, let's be very clear, because there's some things that are not for you. So God, like, girl, get out of here. I got something bigger. I got something better. I have, I have this thing. Just trust me. And at that moment, I felt like my body relaxing and me getting to this place of like trusting. I don't, I, I want to know everything. I want to know now. I want, don't tell me, hey, I got something to tell you. I'm going to tell you later. I'll stop talking to you over there. I'm going to be honest. Because why would you, why would you stir up my anxiety like this? Why would you, I'm an overthinker, but my overthinking, I, I started to realize this comes from childhood. This comes from me being in this this place of like, if if someone says that, it automatically has to be negative, right? Sometimes people just want to tell you in person. They want to be able to hug you. They want to be able to see your response. But if you ever told me that a couple years ago and I, I and you wonder why you haven't heard from me, that's why. You haven't heard from me because you told me I got to tell you something. And I said, yo, I don't, I don't really like that. Like, can you just tell me now? Like, I just stop. I just forget it. You and your secrets and... <laughs> Y'all could go because I this is gonna this is gonna drive me insane. So anyway, I'm just thinking about all of the stuff that was happening that day. And I'm like, girl, please. I looked around. 
Goliath was still asleep. I looked around. I went to my altar, and I just sat there, and I cried. And once again, y'all are holding back emotions. We are not. It ain't even because you want to hold back the emotions. As a child, you were told, stop that crying for I give you something to cry about. Or what you crying for? Or, you know, something that made you just suck it up. Stop all that crying. Because crying is always linked to like being weak. And I, I was crying this morning. I cried. Now y'all done <laughs> been here for a while now. I cried. And before you want to hide yourself when you're crying, I cry and I just, I let it rip because it's, it feels like a nice glass of water just being like, like let it out after that cry. You're like, Whew. all right, let's get in. And I cried and I went to my altar and I prayed to my ancestors and I was just like, I sound like a brat. Worrying about something and now I know better. I know if things are removed and we be wanting to hold on tight. You want to hold on so tight, girl. You don't even really like him. Do you? Does he actually do the things that you need like and that's the thing like make this list and I made a list a while ago and I wrote down the things that I want and the things that I really need and once it needs change but I still wrote down the the non-negotiables the things that I really really need communication reciprocity like that that equal give and take that equal excitement and there's things that's going to happen in lives where those things may not be able to be given at that current time, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about just in general, right? I realized, oh yeah, I got to move this location because the way they slam these doors, they boss must have got on their nerves and I've been there, so I understand. But yeah, anyways, I realized while sitting there, some of the things that I cried about before I got to this space in my life, didn't deserve tears. They did not deserve all of that energy. I could have been putting that energy into my purpose. I could have been pouring into myself. I could have been looking at the cups that are behind me. Because sometimes we're, 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 we're looking at this cup that's spilled over, not realizing it's a motherfucking, it's a, it's a cup right here. It's a water fountain. <laughs> it's a, it, it, it's plenty more. I got up so fast. I went and prayed for about five minutes because I was like, all right, we got to get up. This is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go to the studio. First of all, I'm going to get Goliath out this house into school. Uh, this new way of homework, they send one packet and you have like all week to do it. Baby, between Monday and Wednesday being karate, this day and this day being this, I'm tired. <laughs> We all tired. He don't want to do it. I don't want to do it because what does this even mean? I remember I had to ask Suri something. He was like, you don't know that? Nigga, what? No, I don't. This is not how I was taught. But instead, you know, this morning when I got him up, I finished praying and I was like, all right, we're going to get it. I went, I jailed my little edges back because I had to switch gears. I jailed them little, slick my little shit down. I was like, okay, boom. We're going to put on the same outfit as yesterday because we ain't do much and staples and essentials it's cool we're gonna put the same outfit on as yesterday we're gonna dress it up with a with a skirt and we're gonna do some makeup today yesterday it was just some you know we was running errands whatever so we leaving out well he, we have to do his homework so we do his homework and he's just busting this shit out and I'm looking like wow I'm even grateful during homework time and a lot of moms and a lot of dads and a lot of people love to put these children on the internet. Like, if Johnny had three apples, Pauls, we don't do that. You're stressing them out. These kids are, they're learning something fresh, right? They, they don't, they can't think like we think. They don't have the opportunity to be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. They are learning for the first time, so stop that. So we're doing homework. And I'm watching Goliath and I get emotional when we're doing homework or when he's reading out loud or when he's 
solving a problem on his own because I remember just being sat down to do my homework, but I don't recall being helped with my homework. And that does not mean that my mother what didn't care. That means that my mother was so fixated on having to go to work and take care of her children because she worked seven to seven that she was asleep. She had, to, she had to get rest to go to work. She's working seven at night to seven in the morning. So if we're getting home at three, she's asleep. Either way, that's where forgive, forgiveness comes in and perspective changes and shifts, right? So while we're doing homework, I'm just looking and I'm smiling and I made breakfast and he ate his breakfast and it was just a smooth, it was a smooth morning. We left and he didn't have his coat on. I don't know why these teachers outside bundled up and these kids don't have no jacket on. And if any moms from the school find this podcast, this is not to say anything rude. Let me just say that before. This is a disclaimer. I love the community that my son is in. But one thing I've noticed, white kids don't get cold. There's kids with shorts on. So if his best friend has on shorts and a short sleeve shirt and it's 40 degrees, he's like, I got on long sleeves and long johns. I don't need this coat. The boy looked like this, like snot was running. And I'm just like, I I haven't turned into the moms <laughs> that raised us where I'm I'm like, I don't care what they do when I, I, I don't do that. I'm like, listen, the reason your throat was hurting yesterday, the reason you're coughing is because you decided not to wear a jacket or driving to school. Listen, y'all going y'all gonna to jump with me, jump with me. I don't talk that much. So when I talk, everything got come out at once. But it, anyways, um, we're driving to school. We get out the house. Everything's great. We're driving to school and we see a few homeless people. And I'm and I instead of being like, because I said so, I'm in a space of examples. And I've been in that space with him since I've had him. You know, unfortunately, there's people because he's like, why, why are they homeless? What happened? Goliath got some questions and questions about me also and questions. So he's like, why are they homeless? Whatever. And I'm like, you know, sometimes people fall on hard times. But I took the opportunity to tell him, like, you see how grateful we are, how grateful we should be because we have a jacket. We have warm food. We have a bed. This boy goes, but we only got one bathroom. I'm like, but we're we're moving soon and we got two bathrooms. He's like, and a bathtub. And, and it's just like letting him know that these are all choices. To be a good person is a choice. To some people don't have a choice to have a warm home, a warm bed, you know, food to eat. The kids love throwing away food. They love asking for X, Y, and Z for dinner and then being like, oh, wait, and then I want this. Boy, I'm making separate meals for him and I. And all I keep thinking is, girl, what would you do with a whole family right now? Because somebody, y'all going to have to eat the whole thing. But right now it's us. I wanted chili. He wanted spaghetti. I split that meat in half. That's for spaghetti. This is for chili. But we got to school and he got out that car. He was so happy. Like, he was like, okay. Like, I'm like, please leave that jacket on. I'm driving to work. And I'm still in this, this space of, like, real-life gratitude. Like, okay, I'm going to get to the studio. I'm going to do my makeup. We have a client in here at 1 o'clock. So I could record. I could go to school. I could do. I could go to school. I could do this. I could do that. And be home by 4.30. That dream would have took me out a couple of years ago because my perspective did not change. I was so like fixated on like, why not this? And not looking around like, but I got all of this. This is not even a time to say a win is a win. This win is a win. How, God? Like, are you sure? Like, I'm constantly thinking like, Wow. Now my mind, my mind is being completely, I'm in a, we, we going through portals. We going through doors. We are, we are leaving old things behind. And that's even the old ways of thinking. Most of us have moved on physically, mentally, you have not moved on. 
Mentally, you are holding so tight to something that serves you no purpose. Something that does not fit the list that you've created. Y'all, I was sitting there. I came in. I did my makeup. I was skating around the studio. Bitch, this is my shit. I put my skates on. I put some music on. And I was just like, life is great. Life is life it. Yes, it is. Things are happening outside of my universe. But on this planet right here, this shit good. I can't worry about what's going on on their planet. They can write me out their story at any given time. They can switch directions they, and they have the right to. Because I might be the villain in their story. And, they, and I could do the same thing. But in this life, in this planet, this shit is like, whoa. We went to dinner the other night with Brandon, which is my best friend and Goliath's godfather. And um, I, I spilled the beans to him that I'm in school. And I waited. I waited to, to I, like, nobody, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Um, about time this, you know, nobody knows. But we know now. This is our safe space. Um, I hated school as a child. I hated being picked on to read out loud. I hated not knowing the answer. I felt very nervous. So because I'm nervous, I'm saying the wrong things. And I'm my eyesight is bad, but I'm too cute to put on my glasses. I'm just nervous. Um, I get distracted easily, clearly. Um, so for me to be in school right now, it was like, huh? I think only three people know in the in now you guys, but I was like, oh shit. We are letting go of those little invisible shackles. We're letting go of these things. And when I told Brandon, Brandon's like, you know. He was very excited, but he was like, you know, I knew that you were ready when I listened to your episode um, on Women of Tomorrow podcast. And he was like, you were speaking from a place of where you used to be and not that you're currently living. And I'm like, oh, shit, I really am. Not in, not on purpose. I just I look at things a lot differently. Some of these things are not done to you. They're, they're done for you. Sometimes you're going to hold on so tight to things that are not meant for your highest good that God literally has to pry your fingers off of something. Like he literally has to cause a tower moment, cause some type of separation for you to do what you need to do. You're getting distracted. You're using these things as a distraction. We've been past that. We can still talk about solutions and how we got through these things. But you got to change your, you got to change how you speak about them. Repeating things over and over and over and over and over and over again, especially if they're negative. If they're positive, baby, affirmations it up, okay? Manifest it up. But if it's something negative, understand you're manifesting that as well. You're keeping yourself in this cycle because you keep breathing life into it. That shit is dead. It's dead. All of that does not affect where you are today. That chapter is closed. Like the crazy thing about it is you're not even in the same book. You have a whole new book with blank pages. You can write that story the way you decide to write it. Stop rereading that shit. Some of y'all be writing in y'all journals and y'all lying in y'all journals too. Because it's hard to read the truth. It's hard to see the truth. When you write things down now and the way you speak to yourself, you have to talk so gentle because when I do write, when I do take a, take a step back and look, I'm like, wow, okay. So this morning when I had that moment, I was just like, what's that mean? They was like, did something, something work out? And it did. I was like, and it did. Anything that was meant to be is here. Anything that did not serve a purpose or it has expired is gone. Why do you want to keep spoiled milk in your refrigerator next to your fresh produce? Why do you want to keep that moldy loaf of bread next to the, the new croissants? Because guess what it's going to do? It's going to transfer over over there. You got to let go of that shit. And this, in this chapter, and you know what I was thinking? This is my last year of my 30s. 
I'll be 40 in August. Wow. (laughs) I love to say it. I love to say it. I love to see it. It's okay to grow. It's okay to change. It's okay to say, oh, nah, I thought I, I thought so, but I did some thinking and I'm not interested. This doesn't look like where I'm going. This feels like where I've been and I'm not there anymore. But baby, that dream was like, and I was like, the dream was like this. And I was like, boom. And I felt so good. I didn't have a meltdown. Like I didn't, I didn't sink into depression. Sometimes you're not depressed. Sometimes you are, but sometimes you're just overthinking it. And you're making yourself really. I, I'm gonna be honest, I wouldn't call that depression. Sometimes you're around the wrong people and they feed in that negative thought thought process. Sometimes those people are just you. The voices in your head lies to you sometimes. They're not always honest. They're trying to really get you to stay stuck. This week, I want you to loosen up those shoestrings. I want you to remember that even if your foot is stuck and you out of shoes, bitch, unlace the lace and take your foot out. The shoe might go, but you got your foot. And it's better shoes, girl. Because once you get to the better shoes, they slide in. <laughs> they slide, you know. We ain't even got, we don't need no shoelaces. I hope that this week you decide to let go a little bit more. I hope that you realize that the space that you're living in now is not where you just came from. I hope that you decide to close that chapter and write a new novel. Start fresh. Tear, burn that motherfucker if you have to, if you want to. If you feel like you're going to be tempted to go back, burn it. Let it burn. Have a good week. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for tuning in.